I'm Manuel Collard de Roche, I'm the president and founder of the Monaco Valuate Forum. Today we had a press conference at 11 o'clock, we have many journalists and I'm very happy. We have a beautiful lunch now uh, hosting our guests and VIP. And tonight we will, have we will have a charity gala dinner at the Martinez at 8 p.m. honoring the country of honor, the UEA, United Emirates Arabs. We will give also that night some awards, special awards to some people, and we'll have a lot of surprise also with an auction with the Aquatica Foundation, Bronson's project, Sir Richard Bronson project. Technologies, uh, but uh, that's not important. Let's talk about the reason why we're here. Um, I'm an oceanographer by profession. I did my oceanography at Oregon State many years ago. But many years ago, and you were very young, so you don't remember this, it was something called the Rio Summit. It was the first time uh, the United Nations and the private companies got together to deal with the environmental problems. Um, I was the director of the Rio Summit at that time, therefore I was directly involved in, in the problematic of dealing with the environment. The reality is that not a lot has happened since the Rio Summit. That's the reality. You may have heard that two days ago, a submarine went down to Mariana Trench. You probably heard that. Two days ago. And they found plastic at the most bottom part of the ocean. So I can tell you that not much has happened. So what we're doing at um, uh, Smart Block Technologies with the team, it's not only me, it's a team of colleagues and technologies. And at Smart Block Technologies, we build... Can you turn the volume up? Can't hear you. The volume is not yeah. Yeah. Speak so, louder. Yeah, it's better. Speaking. You have to like kiss this. the microphone. Yes. <laughs> kiss the microphone, please, yeah. Alex. You so, can do it. <laughs> um, so my name is Alex Rodrigo. I'm, I'm the CEO and founder of um, uh, Smart Block Technologies. We are based in Dubai, and I actually grew up there. Uh, I'm very proud to see that the United Arab Emirates is present here today. And uh, to my friends from the ministry, Assalamu uh, alaikum wa marhaba fi khan. And so having grown up in that country, I was able to see an evolution, an extreme evolution in uh, the environment. Uh, I used to remember being a child going in the desert uh, with my teammates to clean up the desert or clean up beaches. The government, the UAE government, has been leading such initiatives for a real long time and today seeing them present here is, is a real pride and honour. Right, and thank you very much for having me. So I, I run a think tank in London called Polar Research and Policy Initiative, where the world's largest star tick... Oh, can you... Right, is this better now? Right, I, I must kiss the phone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so... The British suffered great emergency. Yes, indeed, I'm in France. Uh, <laughs> you have to get used to it. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, you can't do my So, I'm a policy initiative. We're based in London. We focus on Arctic, Nordic, North Atlantic, North Pacific, and Antarctic issues. We have been speaking about the oceans, and of course, oceans around the world have been greatly affected by climate change, by, by contamination, by various other issues. But there is no ocean where you have greater effects of climate change than the Arctic, which we must remember is an ocean surrounded by land. And, and whether it's a problem of plastic, microplastics, which is a big issue of the Arctic Ocean as well, whether you think about ocean acidification, you think about coastal erosion, you think about the challenges facing coastal communities that live on these lands, but basic infrastructure is suffering. So it's very easy when we sit in London or New York or Monaco to sometimes take for granted climate becomes a fashionable policy issue. It's easy to support it because it makes us cool. But when you actually go, go up to Greenland, when you're actually floating with the icebergs and you begin to meet these people so entirely disconnected from the global agenda system and you listen to their stories how they used to hunt and they can't hunt like that any longer. How they used to sail and they can't sail like that any longer. And that's when you begin to realize hunters go out and don't return. You sometimes go fishing and you may not have the same predictability. And that's when you realize these people who are not part of any lobby group, they're not part of any coalition. These are people living on the ground, every day facing the consequences of climate change. They're very often don't start in the Arctic, it starts in the rest of the world. 
but also what happens to the Arctic affects the rest of the world. Because when you have melting ice blocks, when you have, you know, thawing permafrost, if you have rising sea levels, these affect small island developing states anywhere in the world. It affects low-lying areas anywhere in the world. Shanghai is going to be as affected by climate change in the north as anywhere in Iceland or Greenland. And so there has never been a more important time in history for us to be gathering forces irrespective of sector, policy, or film, or fashion, or whatever. We need to come together to address what the Guardian called not just climate, climate change challenge, it's a climate catastrophe. It's a climate crisis. But most importantly in this debate, I would ask you not to think of climate and environment just as a geographic or climatic condition. Remember there are people living in these communities and any work we do with the oceans or with climate must take into account the people who suffer the most as a result of it. Uh, bonjour, je suis Manuel Collat de la Roche, uh, je suis producteur dans le cinéma et je suis aussi le président du Monaco Bellwell Forum que j'ai créé en 2014 sous le patronage du Prince Albert qui a lieu chaque année à Monaco avec un événement chaque année à Cannes. C'est le topic, on va dire, la, la, la base et de notre mission, c'est de créer une ouverture de conscience sur les grandes problématiques de ce monde. Et cette année, nous avons choisi les océans et l'environnement, qui est pour moi et nous tous capital. Quels sont vos gestes écologiques au quotidien Alors, mes gestes écologiques au quotidien, je trie mes poubelles. Je fais attention à éteindre les lumières où que je sois, que ce soit même à l'hôtel ou où que ce soit, pour que toutes les lumières soient éteintes. Je fais très attention aussi euh, à ce que je mange. Ça, c'est un petit peu dévié de la question, mais quand même. Je, il y a plein de choses que je ne mange pas, que je ne mange plus d'ailleurs, et j'encourage mon prochain à, à faire ainsi. J'essaie je, aussi de ne pas utiliser de bouteilles en plastique, ni de paille, ni toutes ces choses. Voilà. J'essaie vraiment de faire euh, mon possible euh, au quotidien. Pensez-vous que le cinéma puisse être un acteur du développement durable Le cinéma a un rôle extrêmement important, il est capital. Le cinéma est un médium important pour transmettre un message et créer une ouverture de conscience sur ces thématiques-là. Il est capital, euh, je dirais même plus, il est essentiel. Que pensez-vous du concept de la journée by the land La journée by the land est une, une journée et une terrasse que je trouve qui est formidable parce que c'est la première fois que quelque chose comme ça est organisé à Cannes. C'était important. Et j'espère, je leur souhaite longue vie, parce qu'il faut quelque chose comme ça chaque année, avec des intervenants et des gens engagés euh, qui tiennent et qui organisent cette terrasse. Euh, parce que, avec tout le respect que j'ai pour tout le monde, beaucoup de terrasses sont là que pour faire de la célébrité ou du photocall, ou alors pour se faire voir. Mais l'important, c'est de se faire voir, certes, mais d'être quelqu'un d'engagé et de transmettre un message à son prochain pour que la planète aille mieux. Donc je les félicite parce que c'est une première initiative et j'espère qu'elle va continuer. Pour le cœur dans le cinéma, mon premier film a été fait sur cette sainte ama euh, qui s'appelle Mata Amrita Nandamayi, qui est la plus grosse fondation en Inde, qui crée des hôpitaux dans le monde, euh, qui a une mission exceptionnelle dans le monde. D'ailleurs, je travaille pour elle aussi bénévolement à l'année. Et j'ai produit ce film qui était en section officielle à Cannes, qui a été réalisé par Yann Kounen. J'ai ensuite fait un film qui s'appelle Kalachakra avec le Dalai Lama et la voix d'Uma Thurman. Ça, c'était un deuxième film engagé euh, qui, pour moi, était extrêmement important. Et, et donc, je suis un homme de cinéma. Et c'est pour ça aussi que, pour ma part, c'était important d'être présent et partenaire de la terrasse euh, la journée. Euh, et parce que, pour moi, c'était évident et capital parce que Sandra Rudich et toutes ses équipes et ses associés sont des gens de cinéma. Je suis un homme de cinéma et c'était important de se retrouver ensemble ici et de, et de travailler ensemble. Voilà.